Stephanie has her master's degree in environmental science and policy from the University of Wisconsin, Green Bay. And she will share with us tonight how the restoration that JNDC helped to initiate has created a positive impact for birders, nature lovers, and the community. Stephanie. All right, thank you, Ellen. And thank you all for funding this important work. That's really exciting to me to uh, learn that you all had an impact on improving the, the park at um, Park 538. And so I'm gonna be sharing a little bit about our involvement in that work and um, you know what's happening there now. So um, I, I uh, imagine, or I, I know that since you all funded this important work, you all already know the value of urban green spaces, but I just want to say, you know, that urban green spaces are really important for people. As we all know, um, we've had uh, seen a few studies out recently that say that, you know, spending time in nature, viewing wildlife and birds can actually make people happier. And that's not really a surprise for those of us that already spend a lot of time doing those things. Um, but I just want to also say that even really small uh, urban green spaces, uh, just even patches here and there of uh, wild habitat are really important for birds too. And so preserving those spaces for people also has a big impact on our wildlife, especially migratory birds that need um, space to rest and refuel on their uh, migration journeys that are happening right now. So um, a little bit about the restoration that occurred. Um, there was a prairie enhancement uh, between 2018 and 2019 led by a group of partners. We worked closely with the Chicago Park District that actually led the on the ground restoration. Um, but just showing you here, there's a map of Park 538 um, along the, the, the Chicago, um, the, the North Shore Channel here. And then um, if you see this area highlighted in yellow, this used to all in what appears in the map is all lawn space. And this also formerly acted as kind of like a parking area. So it really wasn't providing any kind of habitat um, because there's not really a lot of diversity. The grass is really short. So there's only a few birds that can really benefit from that. So the park district enhanced it by um, planting prairie plants. So we're talking about um, wild native grasses and uh, flowering plants. So it's, it's really going to be kind of like a grassland habitat with all kinds of different uh, types of vegetation that can provide important uh, uh, food for, uh, they, they were also looking at butterflies, but also birds. And because um, we knew that it couldn't necessarily attract uh, breeding grassland birds that kind of need a larger area, we really focused on migratory birds because even small habitat patches can be incredibly valuable. So Audubon Great Lakes led a study where we um, had folks, uh, a community scientist um, it, uh, from Chicago and, and some folks that had birded here, you know, growing up, uh, participate in a survey where they went out uh, at least once a week in the spring and fall and counted all birds that they could detect in that yellow outlined area. Um, we also had folks do um, surveys in the red area, which is just this woodland, um, just to compare uh, before and after in an area where there was habitat restoration and where there was not. And so um, because it was a, a pretty short time period for the study, um, we could only find um, limited results as far as, you know, what birds actually are using the park but it's an ongoing study because you can still participate uh, by submitting bird observations or any birders or community scientists, anyone that visits the park can log on to ebird.org and um, submit their sightings. And we've even seen um, a little bit of an uptick in birding at Park 538 that may uh, be due to um, some of the restoration happening here. Um, I saw more bird uh, birding lists submitted uh, in the last year. So it could be because of the restoration, it could also be because of the pandemic, you know, um, which caused more people to start birding in their neighborhood. And, um, but that's a good thing too, because that might've helped them discover uh, a local park like Park 538. So just a, a few tidbits about what's going on now. We're right in the midst of spring migration at, um, and Park 538 is an excellent place to see migrants, as I mentioned, um, like this Wilson's warbler. Uh, the photo before that was a northern flicker. 
those birds are traveling through right now. And you can see all kinds of colorful migrants that are traveling here, some all the way from South America and uh, have their destination currently as Northern Canada. So in, a, in the next few weeks, we're gonna be seeing peak migration and it's a great time to go to the park and see you know, up to even you know, 80 species in one day. It's, it's pretty incredible. Um, it's also the, the beginning of the breeding season. So we see our local breeding residents like American Robins, Canada Geese, Mallards, uh, Northern Cardinals all beginning to breed and those all nest you know, at Park 538. So again, if you want to participate or share how um, your, your neighbors or friends can um, be a part of community science, uh, we recommend checking out eBird, which is eBird.org, or you can download the app directly to your phone. And then you can submit, use the app to actually submit any bird sightings that you see. iNaturalist is another one where it's also an app on your phone that you can download and you can submit any nature sightings. So if you don't know birds, you can actually um, take a photo of a plant and they'll help you, it'll come up with uh, identification for you. So you don't even have to know what species it is. This is a really great resource. And then also um, you can download the Audubon field guide app for free. Um, and that, that can be a great reference tool for learning the, the birds around you. So that's, that's uh, my short and sweet presentation, but I welcome questions. And if you wanna follow up with me, um, you know, you can reach out to me um, at my email, which is stephanie.gokey at audubon.org or visit our Audubon Great Lakes website at gl.audubon.org. I know the Audubon Society has always been involved with birds, but how do we uh, work to get more milkweed to have a more friendly habitat